Hey guys, Jeremy with Middle Tennessee Firearms Training here doing our first concealed carry gun review. We're doing a series of videos to go over some of the most popular concealed carry guns on the market to kind of help you guys in that process, whether you're new to firearms, looking for your first concealed carry gun, or maybe you've got some experience already and you're just looking to upgrade. Hopefully these videos help you. First off, the video we're doing on today is the Shadow Systems MR920, a pretty neat little gun. A uh, little history on the gun, it is a Glock Gen 3 clone, so get that out of the way real fast. And you know, they're just like, it's just a Glock, it's just a Glock. Yeah, it is a Glock Gen 3 clone, and we will dive into some of those topics of uh, what we graded it on and how we ranked this gun as far as being a pretty solid concealed carry gun. Uh, also, right out of the gate, want to get this out of the way, no, Shadow Systems did not sponsor me in any shape or form, and they did not ship me these guns to try out or any of that stuff. Uh, these are mine, I own these, and then same uh, mention I'm going to do for this uh, holster company, T-Rex Arms Holsters. I used this one to conceal carry this gun when I did conceal carry it. This is not my EDC, but I did want to conceal carry this uh, for a time so I could honestly give honest feedback on how concealable it is, right, and how it feels and how it rides. Uh, the reason I mentioned the holster company is because one of the categories that I rank these uh, guns in and all of our reviews, one of the categories you should consider when purchasing your new firearm is the reputation of that company and the customer service. This company, T-Rex Arms, does a phenomenal job with their product and also their, their customer service actually does even better. I don't know how that's even possible considering how good their product is, but their, uh, their customer service is on point. Second to none, I would argue that, and uh, you can't change my mind. So there's the shameless plug there for them. And no, they did not send me any gear to sponsor this at all. I purchased this gear to try out. And uh, I, again, a lot of my holsters are T-Rex Arms holsters. And that's, that's just how I roll because it's good stuff, right? Support the locally owned and operated people. All right. So the categories on which we rank some of these things on these, these uh, Shadow Systems MR920s are the reliability, capacity, concealability, the shootability, the trigger, the sights, the, uh, again, I mentioned the customer service and the manufacturer, the reputation there, and of course, price of the gun. Right out of the gate, reliability, I'm just, I'm going to cut straight to it. It's a 9 out of 10. I'm 3,300 rounds deep, at least, into these guns, with this one having 2,200-ish rounds through it, uh, both in IDPA, training classes, uh, both teaching and I've gone and taken other people's classes using this gun. It's a phenomenal gun. Uh, and I have no complaints on when it comes to reliability. The only ex, uh, ex issues that I experience, and now first off, there is a break-in period. Shadow Systems makes it very clear that all their guns have a break-in period. Should pay very close attention to that. I didn't experience any issues through that break-in period. Um, but they come with PMAGs. I'm not knocking PMAGs, but I'm knocking PMAGs. Don't make a PMAG your carry magazine. Leave that one at home. Save it for the range. Uh, it's great to train with. But for the most part, please go get some Glock mags, run Glock mags through these guns. I did experience a few hangups where the P mags did not uh, lock the slide to the rear at empty. And uh, we did have a couple of, um, I want to say, misfeeds or double feeds that actually, when I run Glock mags, never had happened uh, out of any of them. But when I ran P mags, I had a couple of those issues arise, right? Um, as far as capacity goes, Look, no reason to spend too much time on this. 15 plus 1, uh, just like the Glocks, they take the Glock magazines. I give it a 10 out of 10 on that. Uh, concealability, I give it a 7 out of 10. It's not for everybody. Not everybody can conceal carry this gun, and that's understandably it's okay. Fits in this holster really well with T-Rex arms. They obviously make holsters now for these things. Uh, appendix carry, they run great. Uh, I had no issue concealing in most of my wardrobe. If I was to wear a t-shirt, I might have a little bit of an issue with printing at certain angles or if I've bent a certain way. So a button-up shirt, uh, untucked, or, you know, obviously during the winter, if you're wearing a jacket or a hoodie, obviously you're going to have no issues there. But for the most part, um, I didn't have really any issues concealing the gun. Uh, that brings me to another point when you're considering a concealed carry gun. Don't think that you have to completely change your wardrobe around your carry gun and don't think that your carry gun has to only fit your wardrobe. You can kind of blend it and find somewhere a happy space in the middle, right? Meet in the middle when it comes to 
your wardrobe and your concealed carry gun. Maybe change a few things in the wardrobe and maybe find the right gun compromise in the right areas uh, to be able to carry. Because depending on where you carry, whether it's that appendix, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, um, that actually factors in big time when it comes to concealability, right? I gave it a seven out of 10. Shootability, being that recoil management, obviously that depends greatly on you having a good firm master grip, but this also has the grip texturing in all the right places. Uh, and it does have a really nice cut in the trigger guard there for a good contact point for me. I gave it an eight out of 10 on that. Uh, as far as the trigger goes, I think it's better than a Glock standard trigger right out of the box. I like these triggers a bit more. Nice crisp reset and a crisp break. I like that. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 on that. No, it's not that buttery smooth staccato slash 1911 trigger that we all would love to have. But for being a striker fired polymer frame gun, I think these are some higher end triggers. I really do like them. Um, the sights, 9 out of 10. It comes with a high vis front sight, night sight. They are mid height sights, mid, uh, mid height sights. And I like that because if you wanted to, you could co-witness if anything happened with your optic and it failed for any reason, uh, your backup sights here, they are not the large suppressor height sights. They are just, just high enough to where you can co-witness with most of your optics that you carry out there. Um, that's a big deal. I like those a lot. Uh, when it comes to customer service and reputation, I mentioned why I'm, I mentioned the holster company. Well, let's talk about this. The reputation of this company and, and, and so far what I experienced. I did have to call and ask about some parts that were missing out of the box when I bought this brand new. They didn't waste any time. They got me what I needed and shipped it out in a reasonable, timely manner. No issues there. I score them only an 8 out of 10. Not perfect because... I'm waiting for that other issue. You know, if the gun has an issue or if I need a part replaced that I need to send the gun off for, uh, that is the only experience that is really going to a change and get you a perfect 10 is if I had to do that. I didn't have to do that right away. So my research on that and through social media and other places where people have posted their experiences, most everybody has a pretty solid thing uh, to post about. I uh, saw very few, if any, complaints on their customer service. So they've done a pretty good job there. Uh, hats off to them. And again, they put out a good product. As far as the price goes, if I had to rank the price uh, where this is in the concealed carry market, uh, it is higher than your typical concealed carry guns. This gun is probably going to run you about Mm, 780 to as much as 900 depending on the uh, the gun shop you get it at um, they're going to you know depending on if there's an optic on there already is going to affect the price you can find them for over a thousand dollars depending on other customizations that have been done to them but for the most part it's uh, i have to give it a five out of ten and the reason for that is again there's plenty below in price that are still good quality but maybe they don't come with the same customizations and the same uh upgrades on sites right if you get a glock most of your glocks out there now glock 19 with a with a optics ready cut frame or slide is going to run you in that 650 to 700 dollar range maybe a little bit cheaper if you if you find the right place but you're still going to need to replace the sites i don't like i don't dig the sites so if you're going to upgrade sites it's another 100 120 dollars if you're going to do anything about the trigger you're probably going to spend another 100 bucks or more on trigger stuff so by the time you upgrade a, a Glock to be what this is right out of the gate, um, you've spent nearly, if not maybe the same price as what it would cost you uh, to just buy a Shadow Systems MR920 out of the box. I like them. I'm a fan of them. If my, uh, if my carry gun went down and I had to send it back to the manufacturer for any reason uh, and I needed to carry something else, I have trained enough that I'm pretty confident with this uh, to the point where I could just pick this up throw it in a holster and be good to go. Uh, but that is another key point. Whatever you decide to conceal carry, you must get trained on. You can't just pick up a gun. Oh, great. Give me the hollow points and let me go. I'm good to go. Too many people think that way. I worked in a gun shop and a lot of customers that I sold guns to, that was their mindset. That's not how things work. You need to run carry ammo through your gun, which by the way, I did run quite a bit of carry ammo, both Federal, HST, Spear Gold Dot, and then even some of the cheaper stuff. I think it was some Sierra Hollow Point stuff, 115 grain stuff, uh, the, the real cheap stuff to really find out what this gun could eat and whether 
the gun would tolerate the cheaper stuff and it ran it just fine like I had expected it would. Um, but you've got to do these things. You've got to test something. It's something that you are going to put your life in the hands of. You're trusting this gun to work when you need it. You better train with it and you better make sure that the ammo that you've chosen to put in it runs through it without issue. That's it guys, I hope this is helpful. If you guys like the video, please give a like and share. And of course, follow us on our social medias. We got Instagram and on our Facebook uh, as well. Guys, uh, I can't stress enough, get out and train, not just with your new carry gun, but if, you're, if you got a gun for home defense, whatever you've chosen, get out and do some training. Get familiar with your gun. Know your gun to the point of like it's the back of your hand and you just know how it's gonna operate every time. It's so important. In today's world, we just want to pick things up and be ready to go. We just That's just the culture we live in. We want to pick it and be ready to go. You, if you want to be good at it, you got to train at it, and that's the key to getting better and raising your standards at it as well. All right, guys. Middle Tennessee Firearms Train. Educate, train, defend. Please stay safe, train hard, and we'll see you out on the range.